G'day students. In the last video, we introduced you to an interesting application or area of study involving the Pythagorean theorem called Pythagorean triples, which are just three numbers that uh, basically fit the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Well, it turns out some of those Pythagorean triples can also be classified as primitive Pythagorean triples. So just have a look at this particular set of Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, etc. Now they all have something in common. So can you see what it is? So I'll just give you a few seconds. Maybe you want to stop the video and have a look at those. And it turns out that these are really, except for the top one, these are all generated from 3, 4, 5. So 3, 4, 5 is called a primitive Pythagorean triple because it can't be simplified. But if I double each of these numbers, 3, 4, 5, I get 6, 8, 10. So in a way, this is the same Pythagorean triple as that, but doubled. It's not exactly the same, of course, because it's a, if it's a triangle, it's going to be a different side triangle. 9, 12, 15. Well, the 9, 12, and 15 is just 3 times 3, 3 times 4, 3 times 5. 12, 16, 20, I've multiplied each of the numbers by 4. 27, 36, 45, I've multiplied each of the numbers by 9. 300, 400, 500, I've multiplied each of the numbers by 100, and so on. So one thing that this tells you straight away is that there has to be an infinite number of Pythagorean triples. Because once you have one of them, 3, 4, 5, you can just multiply those three numbers by any natural number and you get a new one. So 3, 4, 5 is considered to be a, Pyth a primitive Pythagorean triple because it can't be simplified. 6, 8, 10 is not primitive because you could divide each of those numbers by 2. 27, 36, 45 is not a primitive Pythagorean triple because you can divide each of those numbers by 9. So a primitive Pythagorean triple can't have any common factors in the three numbers. Okay, so once you know one Pythagorean triple, the primitive, sorry, once you know a primitive Pythagorean triple, you can go ahead and generate as many more Pythagorean triples as you wish. So what I'd like you to do is here's um, a Pythagorean triple, 5, 12, 13. See if you can write down two more Pythagorean triples based on that. And similarly, do the same for 8, 15, 17. So stop the video, have a go, and then we'll check the answers uh, shortly. Okay, well, this is a fairly easy question. If 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple, we just multiply those three numbers by any number we want to. So obviously, 2 is the easy one. So we could say 10, 24, 26 is a Pythagorean triple, and I might multiply them all by, say, 4. So you probably had different answers to me because you multiplied by different numbers. You see 12 times 4 is 48, and 13 times 4 is 52, and so on. So you could continue to generate as many Pythagorean triples as you wish. 8, 15, 17, again, the easy one is doubling, 16, 30, 34, and I might multiply it by 10. So that just gives me 80, 150, 170. So again, I can multiply the three numbers in the Pythagorean triple by any natural number, and that gives me a new Pythagorean triple. Okay, let's uh, just have a little bit of a practice with that. Um, in the box here, I want you to move all of the Pythagorean triples down here that are primitive Pythagorean triples. So in your case, just um, in your exercise book, just write down which of these actually are primitive. So stop the video. There's eight of them down there. Which, which of those are primitive Pythagorean triples? Okay, let's see what, what you came up with. So, well, 5, 12, 13, we've already done. So that's an easy one. 10, 24, 26, well, they all have a factor of 2. So therefore, that's not a primitive Pythagorean triple. 30, 40, 50, they all have a common factor of 10. 
15, 36, 39. Well, three divides into each of those, so that's not a Pythagorean triple. 21, 72, 75. Let's have a think about that. I think three goes into each of those numbers. Yep, so that's not a Pythagorean triple. 16, 30, 34. Well, each of those numbers is even, so therefore two is a common factor. 8, 15, 17 is a Pythagorean triple. There's no common factor other than one. And a bit of a tricky one, 39, 80, and 89. Um, the fact that 89 is a prime number helps us realize that, therefore, there are no numbers other than one. That are com That's a common factor of 39, 80, and 89. So there's a Pythagorean triple with some bigger numbers in it. So it turns out of, out of that list, we just had three that were primitives. Okay, here's a few problems for you to solve. So once again, have a read of the problems, um, stop the video, and once you've had a go, um, turn it back on again, and we'll check your answers. These, these aren't very hard, by the way. The numbers 3, 4, and 5 are a Pythagorean triple. Use this fact to find another two Pythagorean triples. Well, once again, we just have to multiply 3, 4, 5, by whatever numbers we want to. So I might multiply them all by 6. So 3 times 6 is 18. 4 times 6 is 24. 5 times 6 is 30. I might multiply them by um, 11. So that gives me 33, 44, and 55. So again, once you know um, one Pythagorean triple, you can generate as many new Pythagorean triples as you wish. Okay, the second little problem, explain how the Pythagorean triple, 160, 384, and 416, can be obtained from another Pythagorean triple. So in this case, we could, we could um, basically say, well, because each of those numbers is even, um, they've got two as a factor. So probably the easiest way to do this is to say, let's divide each of those by two. And that means we must have another Pythagorean triple that uh, uses smaller numbers than those. So 160 divided 2 is 80. 384 divided 2, well, half of 38 is 19. And half of 4 is 2, so 192. And 416, half of 400 is 200. Half of 16 is 8. And there's another Pythagorean uh, triple um, obtained from the given one. And we did that because we know that we can divide each of those numbers by um, a common factor to generate a new Pythagorean triple. OK, in the last video for the uh, whole section on the Pythagorean theorem, the next video, we're going to find out um, just how many primitive Pythagorean tr uh, triples there are and how we can generate many, many, many of these. So uh, stay tuned.